Do your curls always seem to start further down the hair shaft instead of right up at the root? While this is totally normal and very common for a lot of people, there are some things you can do to encourage more curls at the root. Well, I'm going to walk you through a step-by-step -step wash day routine that's going to help you get more consistent curls throughout. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Gina and here I make videos all about naturally curly hair. I love simplifying things and really helping you problem solve with your curls so that everyone can achieve healthy your hair. So let's go ahead and get started with the routine. One of the most common causes of straightened out curls, especially at the root, is buildup. Buildup occurs from all those conditioning products that we use, our scalp's natural sebum and sweat, and hard water minerals. I'm starting with the We Dad Waterworks Clarifying Shampoo, which is something you want to use in place of your regular shampoo about once a month or so, just depending on how often that you wash your hair and how much that you typically get buildup. So a clarifying shampoo is stronger than a regular shampoo, and if you have hard water buildup on your roots and that's what's weighing it down, you will actually need a shampoo that has special ingredients. They're called chelating ingredients, and these can remove hard water minerals like calcium and magnesium. A regular shampoo and a regular clarifying clarifying shampoo won't necessarily remove hard water minerals unless you see these type of ingredients on the label. So I've been using this one from We Dad lately and really been enjoying it. It's not too stripping yet it effectively removes all buildup on the hair. A chelating shampoo also removes product buildup by the way. Ensure you're taking the time to really thoroughly scrub your scalp as well. I usually need to shampoo at least twice to make sure that I'm fully removing everything and you'll notice that you get much more of a lather the second time that you shampoo because the first shampoo had more buildup up in the way. I also recommend doing it in sections if you do have very thick hair. Make sure your scalp is fully clean. I always like to check it before I go into conditioner. Then I'm using a deep conditioner from Not Your Mother's that has bond repairing ingredients which will strengthen and prevent damage. Straightened out roots can often be caused by damage which can happen from washing your hair in hot water, the sun, bleach, hair dye, and even straightening. All of those things tend to happen on the surface of our hair. So if you notice that the top layer of your hair is more damaged than the rest, then this is is likely why. While the only way to fully get rid of major damage is to grow it out and get a haircut, you can use products such as bond building treatments or products that contain protein to help strengthen the hair. Bond repairing treatments work to relink the broken bonds and restore strength. And I always notice that my curls really spring up after I use a bond repairing product or products with protein because they help to restore the curl structure. After detangling, I let it sit for about 10 minutes and then I fully rinse it out. You'll wanna ensure that you're fully rinsing out the deep conditioner or even your regular conditioner. And I like to gently massage the scalp as I rinse just to make sure that there isn't any conditioner left behind which can then weigh down your roots. I also like to lift the hair up off of my scalp and just comb through it with my fingers after I finish rinsing out the conditioner. And this just keeps the hair from being stuck to the head, especially if you're gonna be washing upside down. This can help the curls really start to spring up before you go in and style. I'm going to be doing some styling in the upright position, which is gonna shape the curls anyways. But if you do like to apply your stylers right away, this is a good technique to use to prevent stretched out roots. So I prefer to damp style, which is just where I usually wrap my hair in a hair towel to soak up the excess water at the roots. And then I will just spritz the lengths of my hair with some more water, just so it's evenly wet and I don't end up with stringiness. Then I'm going in with a heat protectant. I like to use a heat protectant to protect my hair from the heat when I diffuse. I'm using the Curlsmith Miracle Shield, which also protects from UV rays, salt water, and so much more. Then I'm applying the We Dead Moisture Lock Leave-In Conditioner, which will provide moisture. It's not too heavy, so it won't weigh down your hair. I usually will start on the driest areas, which are my ends, and then work the excess up towards the roots. For my main styling product, I'm using the We Dead Advanced Climate Control Stronger Hold Gel, and I finally got a massive bottle of this because it's one of my all-time favorite gels. I like to apply this in sections to ensure every strand gets evenly covered, and I do brush it through. I like to take my stylers all the way up to my roots because styling products are what help to create more defined curls and hold them in place. A lot of people are afraid to apply their stylers to the root area because they think it will weigh your hair down. But if you leave that hair completely naked without any products, it won't be as defined and you can also get more root frizz. The key is to not apply it onto your scalp. You definitely don't want to get products onto your scalp. A little bit is inevitable, but you don't want to be caking the products on your roots just a little bit. You also want to avoid products that are too thick or too heavy such as butters, maybe really thick gels with a lot of oils in them because those can weigh down your roots. I also like to use a brush to style the curls which will also help to evenly distribute the product all the way up to the roots which is in turn going to help them to curl up more. 
Brush styling not only smooths out frizz, but it can also help to create more uniform curls throughout. So if you have a lot of wonky curls, maybe some don't curl up, some look straighter than others, brush styling can really help with that. When I brush style, I like to start right at the root and then twist the brush with slight tension there and then go down the strand. And that tension around the edge of the brush is what helps to create those ringlets, kind of like if you use scissors on a ribbon. You do want to be very gentle though, and you don't want to tug or you don't want to overdo it with your brush styling because it can cause breakage. So if you do have damaged hair currently, or if you're transitioning from heat or color damage, you definitely want to avoid brush styling or only do it on certain areas instead of your whole head. You also want to ensure that you have styling products already in your hair that are very slippery, like this gel. That way when you brush style, it doesn't create snags. You also want to avoid brushing the hair upside down. So this is why I style upright because I have more control over how the hair is going to lay. If you brush style upside down and you are brushing all your hair forward, that can just stretch out the roots, especially in the back area. And you can see that when I was brushing through the conditioner earlier. I also recommend creating a more messy part or avoiding a part altogether if you want more root definition and root volume. I like to have a little bit of a part though to keep my front curls out of my face so that way they're not flopping forward all the time, but I just try and keep it pretty short. You can also try and pay attention to the direction of your curls. You're not always going to get it right and that's totally fine. You don't have to spend too much time on this, but if you are brushing your hair in the opposite direction by mistake, it can straighten them out and they won't curl up as easily. You definitely can't get it perfect every time by any means. It's definitely trial and error. You'll get used to the direction of your natural curls, but any little bit can help if you're really trying to enhance your root curls. You can try to pay attention to it. If you don't want to use a brush and you still want to try and define your curls more, you can try the finger coiling technique, which gives a very similar effect and you don't need to have a brush on hand. So once I'm happy with how my curls look, then it's time to microplop. I like to take my hair towel and kind of spritz it with some water if it's not already damp and then gently scrunch my curls with this. Spritzing it with some water will prevent it from soaking up too much product and will also prevent frizz. I also do just like to hold the roots. This is another great way to enhance the root curls. So I lift the roots up with one hand and then I go in and scrunch with the other and that allows you to really get up to the scalp and that gives you more of those root curls because the scrunching really does help to shrink up the curls. So I just kind of pinch it with my fingers and then gently go all the way up to the roots. So that way you're not just scrunching the lower half of your hair. I don't recommend the traditional plopping method where you tie your hair up on top of your head because that can really just smush down the roots onto the scalp and cause them to flatten up and it just pushes all of that hair product onto your scalp. So I like the micro plopping technique. Then I just go in with a little bit of extra gel. I just sort of glaze it over the surface and this just adds so much more hold when you're applying gel on hair that is starting to dry. You'll get extra hold and extra frizz protection, especially if you feel like micro plopping absorbed a little bit of your product and you saw some frizzy areas. So here's how my root curls are looking right now while my hair is wet and you will see the difference that diffusing makes. So diffusing is crucial. I like to use a diffuser that has long prongs that extend out past the end of the diffuser head because then you can use them to lift the roots away from the scalp. I actually like to kind of just hover diffuse first to help set the gel cast and then I go in and actually scrunch diffuse which is where I'm really enhancing the curls by touching the diffuser to the hair but I'm still being at very gentle but the heat will actually help to set the curl shape and your gel cast so here you can see how I use the prongs to lift the root so I just press right around my root area lift the hair up and then hold and I'm actually holding it for a couple of seconds but this is sped up I also like to try and reach the roots even when I go from the bottom of my hair. So I'll start at my ends and then press it all the way up to my scalp and then try and lift the roots as well. If you have super long hair, you probably will have to do it in sections, but for my hair length, I'm able to press it all the way up to my scalp and then also lift my roots at the same time, which saves me a lot of time. Diffusing with the Curlsmith hair dryer typically takes me anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes max, not long at all because of the super large diffuser head size. Definitely saves me a lot of time especially compared to air drying, which takes hours on end. And air drying always results in a more elongated look just due to gravity and also the water weight really pulls down our curls and can make the curls, especially right at the root, more elongated. Diffusing just helps 
to create more volume and root lift overall. So once my hair is 100% dry, I scrunch out the crunch and fluff out my roots for a softer look. You don't have to go around it with crunchy curls. That's the beauty with diffusing because then you can finish off your curls completely and go ahead and scrunch out the crunch and make sure you like the way that it looks versus having to wait forever for your hair to air dry before you can scrunch out the cast. So here are my results. I've been loving this product combination. I've been using it a ton and it's really great at keeping the moisture locked into my curls. My curls last such a long time and they're so easy to refresh with the Weed Ad Gel. I'm gonna link you to the products down below, but you gotta check out the roots before and after. It's so crazy how a good wash day, especially that clarifying treatment and then using the right products and styling techniques can really transform your root curls. So there's a few more things that you'll want to keep in mind if you're trying to encourage more curl at the root that don't necessarily have to do with styling and washing your hair. And one of those is the haircut that you have. You would be surprised how much a good curly cut will make a difference in your hair, especially if you're somebody with very thick hair. You might want to consider going to a curly hair specialist that can give you a special curly cut. A curly cut is typically done dry, that way they can see exactly how every curl is going to lay. Some people get wet cuts. I actually get a wet cut for my hair just because I don't have a curly specialist near me in my small town. So I just get a regular blunt cut in my curls. And plus I don't have a ton of hair, so I can't have a lot of layering. So I just get a regular trim and keep things all the same length. And eventually, hopefully I will get a curly cut because I would love to do that. Maybe once I can get my hair just a little bit healthier and thicker, a curly cut's really going to help to give you that shape. So if you're your curls are very weighed down, then that's going to cause the roots to stretch out more. And the longer your hair is, there's more weight. You'll notice that whenever you get a haircut, your curls really spring up and you might notice more curl definition right at the root. So highly recommend getting some layering in your hair if you do have hair that is thick enough for layers. Now, as I mentioned, mine is not quite thick enough for layers. So I just do some techniques with styling. I also part my hair differently. Kind of gives me the illusion of layers and some shape, even though my hair is pretty much all one length. I do have some face framing pieces, so they're a little bit shorter, which is why I think these curls really bounce up and I will notice a huge difference when I get these cut. They will shrink all the way up almost to my eyebrow, even though they're only like right here because they don't have that weight. They're not quite as long. Having damage on your ends can also really weigh it down. So just having a fresh cut. I try and get my hair cut about every eight weeks, but I notice that I can't really stretch it further than that. So try getting a good haircut from a curl specialist if you can. It's also really important to remember that having a straighter roots is completely normal and natural for some people. Sometimes it is what it is and you can try all the different hacks and techniques and you might still have straighter roots and that's totally normal. You can try using some of these techniques to try and just get more texture at the root. But overall, if you are still experiencing straighter roots and that could just be your natural curl pattern and there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone has different curl patterns. We have so many different patterns on our head that it's almost never consistent throughout, especially for people who have looser hair and even wavy hair, they're definitely going to notice straighter hair at the root and that's totally normal. So I'm going to link you to all the products that I use in this video in the description box down below, along with a blog post that will outline everything we talked about in this video. It will be a complete step-by-step -step guide. So if you want to follow along it there, if you decide to try out this routine, that post will be linked down below. Just click that see more button and you can expand the description box to find all the links to everything that I talked about here. You can also check out the shop page on my blog as well. If you want to shop some of my recommendations and filter up by your needs. And if you're still looking for more help when it comes to the hair at the root, I recommend checking out the video that I will link right here on the screen. It's all about how to get more volume and there's lots of tips and tricks for low density, thin curly hair. So if you do have thinner hair like me, then you can get more volume in your roots using these techniques. So I will talk to you over in that video. Bye everyone.